Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Colony Drop, a Gundam podcast. My name is Brian. And my name is Isaac. This is your favorite Gundam podcast where we talk about anything and everything that's related to Gundam. So that could be Gundam lore, Gundam ideas and concepts, the music, series, movies, anything and everything that is possibly related to the incredible genre of spanning universe that is Gundam. That's right, Isaac. And today we, uh, you know, there's just been a lot of news over the last like two, three months that we just haven't really talked about. (laughs) So I thought we would uh, take a nice little break and talk about what's happening in the world of Gundam. It also gives us an excuse not to continue Victory <laughs> Gundam for for week nine. We will we will finish it, listeners. Because, oh my God, Victory Gundam! What did you do? <laughs> I'm actually like halfway through it. I probably will have to go back and read my notes because it's been a while since I watched an episode. But I'm getting there. Oh I'm God. I'm on like episode 30 something and it's just, it's a hot, slow rolling <laughs> mess. <laughs> but anyways, enough about that, Brian. Yes, it is a mail episode, Brian. I mean, sorry, so, whoops, a news episode. News time, news talk. Spoilers, right, so, mail's coming soon because yeah. that's another good excuse yeah. to not finish Victory <laughs> Gundam. Yeah, we've been laying them pile up, but this news updates, they couldn't wait. Some of it's important, some of it's recent stuff, so we thought we'd share it with that's all of right. you. So Isaac, I don't think we need to go in any particular order. So I'll just uh, we'll just pick one trade off. All right. Sure, let's do it. So one of the older news things on our list here tonight is something we have not talked about yet. This one I th- I think is pretty cool, Isaac. I'm pretty excited for this one. They announced a new six episode streaming series called Requiem for Vengeance. Ooh, I like the name already. <laughs> It was announced at Anime Expo 2023, so it's back in July. It's a co-production with a production company called Safe House, and it will focus from the Xeon perspective in the European front. I like it already. Yeah, in, in, in 0079. Isaac, the writer, Gavin uh, Hignight, I think his name, cited uh, Gundam Thunderbolt and 8th MS team as influences for this project, which, like, right away, like, I'm in. That that's, sounds good to me. Yes, and yes. The director, he seems pretty enthusiastic about Gundam. He's had, in his little like announcement trailer. He had, did you see his little like Gundam models behind him, flanking him, like giving him some credibility? <laughs> <laughs> I was too focused, Brian, on like the kind of teaser image where it's like the the silhouette of the pilot and the silhouette of the Zaku. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, oh, oh, this is perfect. This is going to be well. We might, I might be getting ahead of us, but um, this is going to be Zeonic Eighth MS team. I hope so, because that sounds great. Yeah. I mean, Isaac, the last show that we kind of got like this, so it's going to be like a CG. It's using the Unreal 5 engine, which people who play games, you've probably heard of ah, Unreal, the Unreal engine. Of course. They want to try this out to kind of see if they can make it possible, and that way maybe they can make other things faster using that engine. Especially with AI, right? They're going to start hammering this stuff out. I mean, we called it, Brian. There you go. The AI is coming. Gundam GPT. <laughs> So Isaac, let's talk about that Zaku. The Zaku looks neat. I thought I saw someone suggest that the girl pilot that she's piloting perhaps a Zaku cannon because it does appear that it maybe has some cannons on its shoulders. I could kind of see that. Wow, that'll be really interesting because we almost never see that variant. No, never. I don't think. I think that maybe it was probably in Unicorn because like everything was in Unicorn. But outside of that. Yeah, Brian, I think we might be in a Zaku renaissance <laughs> because we just saw the Zaku high mobility type in Kukuru's Dones Island. And now we're seeing perhaps some type of, well, it's definitely not going to be a standard Zaku, I assume. But yeah, something new. So we're we're really seeing the, the return of the Zaku. Good. Hey, we got to sell some of, the, some of those Zaku model kits, man. They're underrated. Get them while they're hot. So while the Zaku looks cool, that Gundam looks really odd, Isaac. What do you think about that thing? I'm a little curious if this is the Gundam and they're doing like an unreal interpretation of it. This is how it came out of the software. Or if we're going to get maybe like standard, oh, we had Gundam parts laying around and this is something different. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I was also wondering because it looks a little, I hesitate to use the term bootleg, but it looks a little patched Ah. together. Do you think perhaps that this is a... And it has red eyes, Isaac. It looks really evil. Do you notice that? Ooh, yeah. Do you think it could be like a decoy Gundam that, Z- that Zeon made to, like, infiltrate? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Interesting. I'm going to actually say yeah. no, because part of me believes that the Gundam itself has sort of a, a legendary awe 
inspiring standing in Zeon's eyes. So they wouldn't so much build it, but because the story is being told from the side of Zeon, this might be a case of this is how they're seeing this, the Gundam. It's somewhat of a monstrous different appearance to them than it is in how we normally oh, see it. Oh, I like that idea. I like that. That's cool. I, yeah. could, I could get along with that. Yeah, a bit of a monster for Zeon if you really think yeah, about it. I like it. that. So. I mean, that actually kind of makes sense because they do, you know, Zeon does call the Gundam the White Devil. So that that does kind of look yeah. like the White Devil. And as we saw in the manga, well, the one with Gato, where like the ball <laughs> designed itself as like the the Gundam's head, like the the Gundam's reputation precedes itself in Zeon. Like they absolutely know this thing is dangerous, and you're probably not going to live if you face it. So this is this is its form in their eyes. I like that. I like that. I also love the team name for the Zeon pilots here. They're on the Red Wolves squad. That's a great name. I like that. Mm, pretty close to my favorite team name which was the midnight friend rear core so oh, yeah. red wolves that's pretty cool with me wow southern cross or red wolves what do we, what's a cooler name for you i like red wolves better than southern cross southern cross huh. makes me feel like it's a train interesting southern cross is well obviously the constellation but red wolves i don't know or like a baptist church <laughs> that that's a good one too um red wolves maybe like a a junior or a minor league baseball team <laughs> oh, i could definitely see that that's a fair criticism <laughs> Isaac, I'm kind of hoping this is as good a quality as MS Igloo. That turned out to be great. I'm hoping this one turns out to be great, too. Yeah, I'm optimistic. MS Igloo had great Xeon stories, um, except for the third installment, which was Federation Sighted. But uh, you know what? That was great, too. So I'm really looking forward to this. It's absolutely something different because it's done with the Unreal Engine. So it's going to be a type of computer animation that we don't normally see. But I'm very excited. And Brian... There's something else that's special about it, and that's it's a female pilot. Uh, uh-huh. That's popular right now. Yeah, well, you know what? It's 2023, and it's about damn time. The list is growing. The list is growing. Good. Exponentially, I might add. Uh, so there's two last things on this I want to ask you, Isaac. Sure. This comes up a lot whenever we get a new series in the One Year War. Some of the fandom doesn't like it because they think the One Year War is overdone. I don't really get the One Year War hate. That's like our main thing. I feel like it's okay to go back to that well every few years, you know? I would go further and say that is the purest, most refreshing well filled with delicious water. <laughs> and you you dare not neglect it because uh, the one-year war, need I remind you, was one year. But it took place across the entire Earth sphere. It was a war unlike any other in human history, so there are countless side stories to be told in it, countless characters to meet, countless situation and adventures for us to watch or read about, and I just want it all, and I want it all the time. (laughs) I think I agree. I I think the important word you mentioned there is neglect. As a franchise, you don't want people to forget about the one year war, right? So you gotta keep it fresh in their mind every few years if you're if you're right. man in this franchise. So I, I think it's smart to kinda bring that back up every now and then. The one part of the criticism that I do think is valid is perhaps the idea that there's always another Gundam that we haven't heard of. They continually add more Gundams to the one year war. That that seems a little valid. Yeah, but you know, <sighs> dilute the Gundams a little bit. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you there. I sort of feel like we've reached the max though, right? Like what's the count? I have three off the top of my head. We have Easy Eight, we have Alex and the original. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Yeah, well you're forgetting a lot of from the video games in the in the oh, manga. So God. there's like the G three Gundam, which is somewhat unclear if it actually existed or not then you had units four and five which were from a video game you had units uh, that was the, those were the blue and the orange ones and then there was uh unit six which was mud rock and then there was unit seven although i think unit seven wasn't finished until after the one year war but i'd have to double check that i'll say those are the main seven plus then you're right you had the easy aid and the ground gundams there's also the gundam pixie the full armors the blue destinies the pale rider and there's probably a few others from other side stories that i've not read <sighs> But you can see that once you get past 10, um, that seems like a lot. You know what? Once you get past three, it seems like a lot. So I I completely believe that's valid. It's a valid feeling. And yes, Grant, I just said the Earth Sphere was huge, and it's not out of the realm of possibility that they'd make more prototypes. But at at a certain point, you detract from the original Gundam. And I feel like whoever gave the go-ahead for all these different side stories really should have made them about like custom gyms or something. 
Right, and that's why your idea of the Gundam here being the the original Gundam from the Zeon's point of view, or I'll call it the White Devil version. There you go. That's a nice sidestep to that problem. I like that a lot. I hope that's I hope that's what it is. I'd love to see it that way because it just it allows us to have the same Gundam, but with just so many differences at different points. It, the Gundam can't be everywhere, and it'll start raising some questions if they start putting <laughs> it in every side story. But um, yes, I, I feel like if they can get it to work, and I assume this will be about Odessa, then it'll work uh, perfectly. Okay, and finally, the most important takeaway here from this story, Isaac, is that the writer and the director are not Japanese. You know what that means? That means there is hope for Sunset Productions to one day man our own Gundam series. <laughs> Brian, we better not screw up Gundam the musical. All <laughs> eyes are on us in Tokyo. <laughs> that rendition of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is, is going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. God, what what we call it? Zionic Rhapsody yeah, or something? Probably, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Space Fascist Rhapsody. <laughs> All right, Isaac, what's our next news topic? Okay, our next news topic... How do I even introduce it? The controversy, the the backpedaling, <laughs> the witch from Mercury backpedaling regarding the relationship between Suleta and Miorine. Assuming, listeners, you've actually watched all of The Witch from Mercury, which is doable because it's really not that long of a series, even though it's, you know, somewhat cut in half. Um, it turns out there's a bit of backpedaling regarding the final episode where we see Suleta and Miorine somewhat tenuously in what could be interpreted as a friendship by some people and other people as a clearly a romance. I felt like as the final images and the final <sighs> cells were animated in that series that we saw at the finale, it was very clear this was more than just a friendship. Right, Brian? Oh, absolutely. And even beyond the, yeah. the images on the screen, there was the uh, there was a part in the last episode where Mirine or Eri refers to herself as Mirine's sister-in-law. And then obviously they had rings on. So yeah. to me, and I think most people, that meant, hey, they're married now. But apparently the director, I believe it was, decided to somewhat backpedal. Is that right, Brian? Uh, sort of. So I'm just going to read the first part of the, the article here. So this was reported on by various news article or various news outlets, but you can, you can pick your favorite. I'm going to read the one from Anime News Network. This happened uh, earlier this month, I guess very late July. So it says, Which Mercury fans were in a fervor over the weekend after the digital editions for the Gundam Ace magazine September 2023 issues were updated to remove the mention of marriage in an interview. The print magazine, released on July 26, included an interview with Suleta and Mirine voice actress Kana Ichinose, or Ichinose, and Lin. In the interview, Ichinose, I don't know how to say her name, sorry, discussed the series finale, the final scene between the two characters, and stated, after the three-year time jump, I could feel the intimacy between the two had grown, and, and to see that in a married pair was once again very touching. And then, however, after the print version came out, Isaac, the digital version of the magazine was updated to remove the word marriage from her statement. The digital version now reads, After the three-year time jump, I could feel the intimacy between the two had grown, and to see that in the pair was, once again, very touching. Very small edit, Isaac, but obviously very big implications uh, for the fandom who really liked that marriage. So anyway, people got really mad about it on Twitter, Good. and the publisher came out and said the editor of the magazine assumed that they were married and... Bandai Namco Filmworks, which is now the, I believe that's the new name for Bandai Namco. I feel like they're always changing their name, Isaac. I never know what to call them. Right. Yeah. They said that, hey, they checked the interview prior to publication and asked us to change the text because they felt it was better left to the viewer to decide if the pair was married. So, um, <laughs> I have I have various thoughts on that, but basically after this, you know, everyone got on got on Twitter and was very mad about it, and, and there was a whole bunch of memes made about how uh, things were now up to interpretation, which were no. really funny, and and you know you should go look at all the memes, all the memes because they were they were great, and I loved it. So, I don't know what are, what are your thoughts on this? I have I have a particular view on this um, that's maybe more middle of the road based on wow my my experience in my working life. But what are your what are okay. your thoughts on it? So I have so many things to say. All right, first, clearly <laughs> this is some it, type <laughs> of this this is corporate PR kind of backpedaling where oh well maybe we shouldn't do this because it's too too progressive and pun intended maybe pun not intended I don't know they're they're essentially pussyfooting around the topic right they're they're trying to have their cake and eat it too Absolutely. where they clearly without doubt showed them 
as a married couple. And then maybe they got wrong data or something, but uh, the, the apparently something made them like want to backpedal and just whitewash this whole thing away, just rainbow wash it away and pretend, oh, oh, they weren't actually married. They're just good friends that exchange jewelry, which, which is <laughs> such nonsense. It is 2023 and I can't believe there's this backpedaling as if this is some, some horrible thing that can't be seen. It's ridiculous. And it's very disappointing too because it was such a progressive Aggressive show since it already had a female pilot, multiple female pilots actually, and then we really see this this sudden U turn on uh, something as simple as you know both of them being married. So that's uh, th- that's ridiculous, and it very much reminds me of content in other media where they try to show something that's progressive and then they kind of like backpedal away from it or it's just so in the background that it's it's murkied up like um there was like the live action beauty and the beast mm, and at yep. the end of it lafoe who's like guest on sidekick he's dancing with everybody at the finale including women and then like the the camera kind of stops as he like grabs another man not grabs but like you know gets into dance position with a man and then cuts away Mm. And in Star Wars, the sequels, the horrible sequels, <laughs> at the end of, um, oh God, what's the last one called? Rise of Skywalker. There's like one of the resistance officers who's a woman and she's kissing another woman in celebration, but it's kind of in like the bushes behind Poe Dameron. <laughs> and like, uh, it, it, this is a case of everybody wanting their cake and eating it and wanting to eat it and then spit it back up. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. They want their rainbow cake and then they they eat it and then they spit it back up and they're like, well, well, we had the cake, but well, we did just spit it up, buck up. So I, I, I think it's disappointing all around for them to backpedal so much and do such editing around this. And it's, I think it was the wrong move without question and um, shouldn't have been done in this day and age. Yeah, I agree. This is such a weird thing for them to do, right? You make a whole show about the two characters who clearly end yeah. up together. And then you make this weird edit in an interview that most people aren't right. even going to read. And, and by doing that, you just draw so much more attention to it than you even needed to. You know they what I mean? They Streisand affected themselves. The Streisand effect, right? Where, sorry, Zoomers, Barbara Streisand was, <laughs> it is some type of older woman singer. And apparently the Streisand effect is when she, some tabloid announced where she was buying a home and then she like tried suing them and like, and then that only made, bring, brought more attention to where she <laughs> bought this home and it blew it out of proportion. So by, by trying to bury it, she ended up making it louder. Which is exactly what happened here, and it it's it is just ridiculous. What a terrible corporate decision. Yeah, it's very strange. I think it's just odd that they even thought that was necessary. Primarily because now people know about it who didn't even watch the show. And like that's not a good thing for you to know about the show if that's the only thing you know. I feel like that's very strange. Like, oh, this is the show but that had the gay marriage, but now they're not really married because the company says so. So that's just very odd to me. So a few other thoughts here is I think a lot of people, especially on Twitter, they got like really, really mad at Bandai. You know, they called Bandai, they said everyone there is homophobes and the director's terrible and the writer's terrible and all this stuff. And, (laughs) you know, I I don't know. I guess that could be true, but I I doubt it because they made a whole show about the the two characters. So I think that hatred is a little bit misplaced. Now, in Japan, it's my understanding that same-sex marriage is not legal. But it, I believe a court recently just said that a ban on same-sex marriage is not constitutional, is, is unconstitutional. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not necessarily legalized. It does seem, now I don't live in Japan, I'm not Japanese, but it seems like opinion over there is a little mixed at best right. around same-sex marriage. So, so some people think, okay, well, Bandai just stepped in and said, you know, this is uncomfortable for us, let's backpedal a little bit. Which, that could be true, I don't know. I, I have a hard time accepting that one, though, Isaac, because... They made a whole show about it, and, and clearly if you watch the show, they're married. I don't really yeah see why the company itself would have a, a problem with them being married. I'm just going to throw it out there. My, my interpretation of why they did this is because of other countries that they maybe try to sell Gundam in, like China. Because it's one thing, Isaac, to have it in your show and not say anything about it. Because I'm surprised, actually, people aren't mad at the show that it didn't go far enough and just show a wedding, right? Because we didn't have that in the show. They didn't even really kiss in the show. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And that is very insightful for you to say that this is essentially a marketing decision as the series gets maybe rolled out to other countries or dubbed in other languages. Um, they, they need to, you know, package a product. And we live, of course, in the day and age where... 
there, there are multiple edits of movies for other countries. You may probably didn't see them, but um, they, they exist and things are maybe removed or edited just so they can be sold in those countries because these companies need to make money. I don't necessarily agree with it in this case. I obviously don't. But um, yeah, I can absolutely believe that this is what happened. It's even possible this was one producer or a small group of people in the company pushing this narrative forward and this backpedaling, which is, uh, again, a little ridiculous because like you pointed out, clearly the whole team and planning went into ha- having them be a couple for most of the series and even before this sunrise had in our blooded orphans That's we right. had that that kind of uh it was one-sided but it was still a, a gay romance a gay attraction you know so i would have liked to have seen that become a full couple but it was kind of one-sided and kind of only appeared at the end <laughs> sadly yeah. but uh, in this instance you know the the groundwork was all there so for them to say well it needs to be marketed to these other countries so we need to do these edits it seems like too much is in the story to be removed. So I'd be curious. I'm not going to watch it, but what exactly is the edit that other countries got where this removal of the rainbow was uh, decided to be done? That's just the thing. I don't think they even removed anything in the show. Now, I don't even, I don't even know if it's aired in China. Maybe it has. Uh-huh. If someone knows if it's aired in China and he watched it, did they remove the airy line referring to herself as sister-in-law? Did they digitally remove the rings? Because to me, that would be a real edit. This is just removing some text in an interview that most people wouldn't have read had they not edited the interview. But like, you know, just from my own experience, Isaac, I, I know, like I've seen or heard of situations where, you know, China will see something in the background of a shot that was unintentional and they will interpret it a certain way and they will tell the person who made the film that you have to change that. And it, it could be the smallest thing in the background of a shot. And they say, you can't release that here until you change it. I think there's a misconception out there that people who make content have a choice how their content appears in certain countries. There's no choice. There's, there's no putting up a resistance. It's their way or the highway. You, you don't have the option to do what you want in every country. It, it's simply not an option. You can't say, oh, well, Bandai wasn't brave enough to do this. That's, that's not a thing. It's either a yes or a no. I see. And what I'm thinking is that this was a a legal decision based on risk. They recently built a life-size freedom Gundam in China. Like, they really wanted to get into China. Gay marriage is not a great thing in China. (laughs) It doesn't have a great uh, official, you know, backing in China. Right. Well, I think it's one thing for the characters to skirt around it in the series. Because in the series, again, they don't come out and directly say they're married, but they give you imagery and lines to indicate that. Yeah, but really. then it's one thing for you to, for your company to write it in an interview that, oh, these are married. If China finds out about that, they're not going to be too happy about that you wanting to show your content over there. Now, eh. you, could, you could argue that China would have never read the interview because I don't think Gundam Ace is published there. And I think some people have said it. China can't be the reason because Gundam Ace isn't published in China. It's not for the Chinese people. But it doesn't really matter. It, what matters is did the, the Chinese body that looks at content, did they hear about it? It doesn't matter if the magazine was published in China for fans to read. It's, is this body paying attention to these things? And if they see, hey, this show that you want to export here is about these two women that end up married, that's not great for your chances to get over to get it over there. And no. money conquers all, Isaac. If they're banking on that to fund the show, then that's just going to be the way it is regardless. So okay, I, that's my thought. I could be completely wrong. And they're never going to tell us exactly why they did this. I kind of like your idea, Isaac, that it was maybe one guy who was like, oh, that seems like a bad idea. Maybe we shouldn't write that. And then he he just struck it. And then like it turned snowballed and he didn't think anyone would notice. And then it just turned into this big thing. And now everyone probably is over there like, oh, God damn it. Like, why did you like, why did Johnny like make that edit? God damn it, Kenji. (laughs) Like, you know, once you made the edit, you can't unedit it. Right. So everyone's already mad at you. So people can totally be angry. I'm not saying don't be angry. I think I just don't think people should make a lot of assumptions about people who made the show that they like hate gay people and stuff like that. I just think that's a bit yeah, unfounded. It's, so it's a big company. There's definitely people who have to be against it in the company, but there's also some that are for it. So your, your logic is hard to argue with. I don't agree with what they did. And yeah. And by the way, they may not agree with what they did. I think people think that well, they have to agree with what they did. <laughs> But that's just what they had to do because of, you know, they, they run the company. And people can argue with that, but that's, it, I, I just, I sometimes I think people don't understand that it's, if something costs you 
a million dollars to make Isaac, and, and you said, well, if you do this, you get your million dollars back, but if you don't do it, you don't get your million dollars back. Well, yeah. you can't just throw a million dollars out the window. That's not how things work. I mean, right? you know what I mean? <laughs> you can't just take your million dollars and burn it or throw it in the trash. That's not how the world works. That's not how life works. So it's it's very possible that Bandai didn't want to do it, but they felt they had to either legally or you know for their own risk. That doesn't mean you have to like it. I don't think anyone should like what they did, but sometimes the world just sucks. So Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, there are a couple, and uh, this was just the most nonsensical, nonsense way of, of, of backpedaling, and uh, shame on them. Oh, man, I bet they really regret that. It's caused so much attention to it in the Gundam community, and now they will forever be followed by these up-to-interpretation memes, which are hilarious. <laughs> well, I hope it's lesson learned, and I hope they commit in the next one to the freedom to love. Agree. I think we should have probably just had a wedding at the end, Isaac. I feel like they should have just went for it. They went the whole way. I mean, well, clearly a wedding happened. We didn't see it, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you I know, mean, in the epilogue, give us a... Do two birds with one stone. Just show them at the altar or whatever, you, you know, however how people have weddings in japan uh and and show them kissing you know boom done absolutely that would have been way more celebratory than the ending we got because it was almost like there was really no celebration even though the battle had been won you know it was just kind of people's life a few years later <laughs> oh yeah absolutely I, i'm almost more mad about that they didn't really to your point they really pussyfooted around it even in the show right yeah. because they didn't show them kiss they didn't show them get married and then they they just kind of have rings and they make this vague reference to it like, I guess it is a win, for, you know, for that point in the diversity column. But at the same time, they didn't really commit to your point. Yeah, the, the world will not end if they kiss. I absolutely want to see a Zeonic kiss in Requiem for Vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that same gender kiss, Brian. <laughs> and by the way, I would love to, uh, I would like to congratulate you on your double pun because you used uh, pussyfooting and eating their cake in the same sentence. Uh, so that that worked out two different ways. There so. you go. Wow. Thank you. I appreciate it. We call that a double whammy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even notice the cake part, but I did. So. <laughs> no, no, but I did now. And I'm someone that enjoys cake. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, listeners, let us know your thoughts on on that one in particular. You know, if, rate your anger level on a one one to ten. I don't know. I I just think that's so weird. <laughs> that that whole situation just spiraled out of control for for a dumb reason. Well, I might be speaking for a lot of people. I hope when a, I'm angry at the stupidity of the decision. You know, and absolutely. It, yeah, it is just. It, oh God, it was dumb on all I, levels. It was dumb I don't even to want do talk it. About it. <laughs> It was dumb to do it because you, you made yourself look stupid. It was dumb to do it because yeah. your show contradicts your your edit. And then it was dumb because you had to know that you were just going to get thousands of backlash messages on Twitter, which makes you look even worse. It's one thing if you edit it and people don't notice, right? But, I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything to compare it to, but, like, I, I'm, I'm at a I loss for words. I can't think of anything to compare yeah, it to. Yeah, it's, it's just, it almost seems too stupid to have been approved, but here we are. Yeah, man. So, there you go. Well, all right, Brian. Let's let's move along in the news. Uh, the news queue. All right, maybe a maybe a funnier one or maybe a really sad one, depending on what you like. <laughs> but uh, so uh, our next news item is that the video game Gundam Evolution that we reviewed, Isaac, is shutting down. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we did it again, Brian. Yeah, like our, our our ability to destroy Gundam content <laughs> and fun, like we did for Last Blitz of Zeon. <laughs> took out another one isaac we have like a, a gundam death star <laughs> yeah <laughs> if there's anything you want us to shut down listeners just let us know we'll do an episode on it you know yeah our gundam death star will just blow it out of the sky <laughs> <laughs> the game is shutting down on november 29th which is a little bit more than a year since i think it started it's a year too late if you ask me <laughs> but yeah isaac i mean man that's not a long time for such a big title for them i mean they put a lot of effort into that the results the returns the player base just must have really not been going well for them to be that swift on pulling the plug on the game uh, sorry buddy i gotta disagree with you i don't think they put any effort into it because you and i did not enjoy ourselves well, very much in that game let me be clear I, I don't mean necessarily level of effort in the sense that the game was good because again i think we we both weren't a fan of the game but they nope. they the way they pitched it and marketed it was like it was the bit you know the next big gundam game like they did a pretty good like marketing push for it yeah if only they put that same effort into the actual <laughs> like quality of the gameplay then it would have been such a great experience but it wasn't and i'm i'm happy to see it go and i look forward to better gundam games 
Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for those people who who do like the game because I know there was one or two listeners who enjoyed the game, and we know I had some nice back and forth with them. So I do feel for those guys. Honestly, guys, I feel like Bandai Namco did you dirty here by pulling the plug so early. Um, that's pretty rare that that happens. Is their player base collapsing? Is that why this is happening? I don't like, know. I mean, what, I don't. What prompts this? It has to be right. It has to be monetary reasons. If they were making money, even if the player base was small, they would still keep it running. They must not be okay. making any money, or at least not enough to keep it operational. And I mean, th- generally, those, the way those games work is, you know, their audience doesn't really grow that much over time. You're trying to retain people. You can grow some, but you know, if you're not if you're not playing now, a year in, are you are you really going to grow it that much more? I, I think the first year is probably when they're going to gain most of their player base. I think I speak for both of us when I say good riddance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind it. I, I'm glad that they can now move on to other projects. But man, I, I think if you're a fan of the game, that's, that's a quick entrance and exit there. But then when I think about it, Isaac, remember how one of the things we noted when we played the game was they, they didn't have any of the suits that were from the recent projects. And I still don't think yeah. those suits are in there. Like, if I think about everything that came out in the last two, three years and, and what's coming out, right? Was Ariel in there? I don't think Ariel's in the game. Is Freedom no. in there? I don't think Freedom's in the game. No. Is the Psy Gundam in there? Is the Penelope in there? No. no. What were they thinking, Isaac? You don't have any of your current Gundams in the game. And we, we questioned some of the choices that were actually in there. Right. And not only that, but we questioned even the balancing of different suits against each other, how it was somewhat ridiculous. It was just all around a bad game. I'm not saying you can't enjoy a bad game, because clearly some people did if they're enthusiastic fans, but it clearly had to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think I think they did you dirty players by pulling the plug so early and not really giving you the popular Gundams that the fan base is currently enjoying. You know, like the seed movies coming up, which we're going to talk about. Where's my freedom Gundam as the hype builds up? Where's the Gundam that's in the show that's currently airing in the year that this game came out? It's not in there. That should have been a launch unit, Isaac. Yeah, and it wasn't. Ugh, this Overwatch clone or whatever a clone that, of, that they inspired it from. It's uh, I haven't thought of it since I uninstalled it, Brian. Have oh, you? Oh no, I was super happy to get that <laughs> space back on my hard drive. So yeah, those two gigabytes or whatever it was. Uh, well, maybe it's a little bit more than two. I have since replaced it with uh, Battle Operation Two. So can't wait to play that oh, one and do. A, do yeah, that's episode. coming up too, listeners. Get ready. Super excited. Get ready. But um, yeah, I read this news with glee and not a shred of surprise. (laughs) I personally laughed when I saw the headline. I I laughed, but I was like, man, that sucks if you play the game. But I thought it was hilarious. Apologies, listeners. So long. Goodbye. All right. Next topic, Isaac. We got a title and teaser for the upcoming Gundam Seed movie. It's called (laughs) Drumroll. Ready for this, Isaac? Ready. Out of all the titles they could have picked, they chose Gundam Seed Freedom. (laughs) <laughs> so creative and inspired <laughs> i isaac when we talked about like things we wanted out of the film more freedom is not what i wanted the title alone reflects exactly what i don't want out of this movie but again i guess i'm not the target for this movie so by that you mean like you're not a gundam seed fan and the target is gundam seed fans or i think the target of this show is people who really love gundam seed and gundam seed destiny and they all and they just want more kira all the time every day yeah i mean you're right there and just based off the name it looks like they're gonna just be going back to the bread and butter what they know best and i don't think this will be a wild or innovative story i think this will very much be um gundam seed by the numbers with blue cosmos or what's left of it on one side the plants and lacus and you know her little independent peace faction you know everybody going at it again in pretty much the same stuff we've always seen in both series <laughs> yeah that's i mean the teaser was sort of very hard to understand and really didn't give us a whole lot to go on but it, i kind of got the sense that what you just said is true. It seemed like maybe the same plot is about to recur a third time where Mu is cloned yet again and Kira will defeat him. Except this time there's like a little young girl on a throne who reminds me of like a bootleg Marimea. That's what they're doing. Uh, it seemed like it was going back and forth though between the present and the past because it showed Durandal and Destroy and I don't know. Maybe Kira, it sounds like Kira might be the one who's misunderstood this time. But, but Isaac, they they shafted Atherin again. He, I mean, the, the movie's not called Gundam Seed Justice. It's called Gundam Seed Freedom. They could have at least called it Gundam Seed Freedom and Justice or, I don't know, come up with a better title, Isaac. Give me something. <laughs> endless Justice. <laughs> endless Freedom. You know what? If we're going to copy Endless Waltz, let's just do it outright. You know? 
Yeah. I was thinking, I mean, this might be too American, but I think Gundam Seed, Freedom and Justice for All would be a much better title. <laughs> oh, how about this? Endless Cosmos. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh I like that. I mean, uh, speaking for myself, Brian, I'm clearly going to watch this to root for my team, Blue Cosmos. I hope we can pull it off this time. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I don't think we can, but you know what? We're gonna. We're gonna find out. <laughs> would you be so happy? Uh, like this would be ridiculous, and it would automatically make it a bad movie. But if if the bad guy turned out to be like a cyborg Azriel, would you just love that? <laughs> cyborg Azriel. Oh, I would love that. I mean, Moo lived. So sure. why couldn't Asriel? Yeah, no, anything's possible. Yeah, I'll go with it. Yeah, I definitely. I like, I'm team Asriel. <laughs> <laughs> Moo, like, disintegrated, right? And then they just found him, and he was fine. He had a little scar on his nose, but the rest of his body seemed good. Yeah, I mean, like, in Asriel's defense, like, the beam went through... Oh, no, it didn't go through Moo. The beam... Well, the beam just hit the bridge directly. Okay, maybe Asriel didn't Yeah, I think, it, I think but... <laughs> Asriel's dead, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? He went down like a champ. <laughs> Oh, Ezreal. Uh, so, Isaac, what do you think the inevitable upgraded version of the freedom and the justice should be called? So, to recap, we had freedom to strike freedom and justice to infinite justice. We're clearly going to get new ones. What should they be called? Probably truth. I imagine truth will be in there somehow. Yeah, yeah I was thinking true freedom. Hope is going to be a good right. name. That's about all I got. Truth okay. and hope. I wouldn't be surprised if love shows up. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's that's a strong contender. I was thinking true freedom and absolute justice. That's what I would go with. Absolute justice. That's a cool name. Wait, wasn't that? Oh, no. Infinite justice. Infinite okay. justice was the other one. Yeah. That was the military operation, I think, for Afghanistan or something. Oh, yeah. I almost put that down, too. I wrote down enduring freedom. And then I was like, where did I get that? And I was like, oh, that was yeah. the war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. It was one of the wars. Oh, that, that was we, real. I can't do that witnessed. one. witnessed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unfold across the world all right yeah <laughs> so yeah listeners let us know what you think about the the freedom title and uh, the limited clips we got just being real as much as i enjoy some of gundam seed and even some of destiny a little bit i <laughs> i just imagine this will be a cosmic era by the numbers and i just have a lukewarm feeling about it like i'll watch it but i'm uh, this will go exactly how i think it will with the bad guys getting something to go the plot in motion and then the hero showing up to stop it. Fleet battle at the end, and uh, peace is declared again. <laughs> yeah, with with the meteors in the final battle, and and a musical number by Lacus, aka Lacus. <laughs> uh, Lacus is loose again. Oh, that's what I would call it. Gundam Seed. Lacus is loose. There you go. All right, Isaac. Here's a better one. Good. Here's one I'm more excited about. Well, I guess the last two. I got I got a bonus one I haven't told you about yet, but uh, oh, the mobile let's hear game. Him that we've mentioned a few times uh mobile Gundam uc engage is getting an international release right now you can go sign up i think to, to pre-register once so many people pre-register they're going to give out some free you know in-game currency or whatever which is which is neat so go pre-register sure and this is that game isaac that had the gato short that we watched it had the shima versus the gpo4 short that we watched nice it, it lets you play through sort of all the different you know uc events and, but it also has that, a little bit of that original story with the girl, the new type pilot named Pesh, or Peshe, I don't know how to say her name, where she pilots the Gundam Engage Zero, which was developed as an alternative to the Gundam development project, I think in the you know the early UC uh, 80s. So there's lots of cool stuff. This is the game that animated Moon Gundam for the first time. I think it even has that clip where uh, Amuro pilots the Rick DJ and uh, for Moon Gundam. So I really like that short. So I don't know. I'm pretty excited for this, Isaac. Just even if you don't like this game, I think it's a good step in the right direction for the U.S. getting more translations of, of Gundam mobile games. You know, maybe we'll get the Iron-Blooded Orphans game one day. Probably not, but... Uh, you never know, but absolutely. I'm more excited for this than, you know, the Gundam Seed movie, of course. And I'm not going to sign up for early access or anything like that, but once it's available, it's it's got my money. <laughs> it's free. It's free, by the way. You know, you, you, oh, okay. it doesn't cost anything. Well... So. <laughs> Won't there be in-game purchases well, or something probably, like that? probably, but, you know, you can okay. probably play through. You can be guaranteed I'll be buying the Dom. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, I think you can team up on this game. I don't know much about uh, it. I haven't watched uh, the gameplay, but we'll have to play it together, so. But, Brian, you're going to be with the Federation. <laughs> how will oh, it work? I don't know how it works. Maybe you can pick your own unit. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, we'll see. All right. I'll play Zeon as long as I can, as long as I can pick a Gilgoop. <laughs> That's your Zeon go-to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, may I say you have good tastes because yeah. that's one of the best performing, if not the best performing mobile suit for Xeon during the one-year war. Absolutely. And that leads us right into our next uh, item here, Isaac. 
This is a manga that uh, I've wanted to read for a long time, but I've never read it just because it's so long and it was it's always been ongoing and I like reading things that are done. And that is the the manga called Return of Johnny Ryden. Oh dear. It's finally ended after 13 years, Isaac. I think it ended at 25 volumes, which is a lot. I don't know how we could ever review a 25 volume manga series here on the podcast, but maybe we'll try someday. We'll get to it. <laughs> it's on it's on the list. <laughs> I checked today. There's four different scanlation groups that have done. I think all together they've they've gotten through like volume 19 so there's still as far as i can tell six volumes that remain untranslated all unofficial of course Uh all affiliated with crossbone vanguard (laughs) but this one i like isaac because johnny ryden's one of my favorite pilots based on that original manga he was in with the gelgook and uh just to give the listeners a little taste if they've never heard of this manga i wrote down that i copied the two summaries one from wiki and one from uh i think the, the manga updates page So, one, after the end of the one-year war, a man named Led Wayline was recruited to serve in the Federation Survey Service. One thing is, though, Led has no idea who he was, but as time passes by, he gets some dreams of his ties with a Xeon pilot named Johnny Ryden. And the other one, in UC-0090, three members of the Federation Survey Service, Remia Greenwood, Led Wayline, and Ashley Brown Brandon, are charged with collecting data on various mobile suits that will bring the dark parts of the end of the one-year war to light. Among their subjects of interest are Cassilia Zabi's ace pilot only Chimera Corps and the Xeon ace pilot Johnny Ryden. Well, I'm sold. <laughs> so if you like learning more about the Chimera Corps from the One Year War, this is the manga for you because they introduce all the different pilots and they show all the different Gelgoogs and other suits that they piloted. Super cool. I love it. I can't wait to read it. Hopefully someday someone gets on those last six volumes uh, at some point. But yeah, I like that one, Isaac. <laughs> Why, Brian? Why? Why couldn't he get to the Zanzibar sooner? <laughs> <laughs> he would have been pretty disappointed when he got there, Isaac. <laughs> well, <laughs> if he only got there sooner, Brian, he could have prevented what happened. Oh, well, that's true. Do you think he could have? Yes, without question, because he would have been in a mobile suit, and Shar would have just been you know, an infantry guy at the bazooka. Oh, that's true. He could have swatted him out of the sky. Or just you know, put his hand in front of the bridge and taken the shot into the, the mobile suit's hand. Yeah, that's a good what if. What if Johnny Ryden had killed Char? How would the Universal Century be different? Oh, Kaisili would have lived on to continue the fight, probably from Axis or, yeah. Wow. A lot of the scenarios where you think of Kaisilia surviving, is it a bigger deal that she survives or that Char dies? I think it's bigger that Char dies. Yeah. Camille would have no, you know, mentor during the Grips War. Maybe the Titans would still be in power. I don't know. I definitely see a mini Zeon Civil War, though, with Delaz versus Kaecilia. Oh, true, yeah. I don't know where Axis would play a role in that, but it's we could talk about that for hours. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, attend Isaac's upcoming college-level course, upper, yeah. upper division course. <laughs> <laughs> the what-if scenario of Kaecilia Zabi versus the Gil Delaz. Zeonic Civil War 103. <laughs> It's coming this uh, fall semester. Yes, the standing room only. <laughs> yeah, the University of Phoenix, so anyone can join. Oh, of course. It's online. Yeah, yeah obviously. <laughs> Isaac, so the last one I want to talk about today was something that uh, I read a few weeks ago, or maybe a few, whenever it came out. But I kind of laughed, and you're going to see why. So th- there was an anime series called Gundam Breaker Battle Log, mm. uh, which we've not really talked about. It's build fighters, but not build fighters. I think I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what it is. Okay, they, they wanted to do it again, but not do it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Makes sense. Good for them. It worked. It was entertaining. It came out in 2021. It's an ONA, which I believe is an original net animation. I think it's originally released like on the internet, basically. And it ended, but I think there's a lot of people who like it. I believe there was even some games, if I recall. And instead of just making a sequel, they let Legendary Comics, which is the comic book division of Legendary like Studio, the studio who's helping you know make the Gundam movie launch a kickstarter campaign to make like a huh. follow-up comic interesting i guess i hope it gets funded if you're a fan of the show and maybe the games but like isn't it kind of sad when they make you start a kickstarter like bandai namco they could just make it it can't cost yeah. that much money <laughs> should shareholders be concerned <laughs> um. isn't that a little pathetic i mean just pay for the comic bandai right yeah a little beneath the company of their size and history right Uh, yeah i think so we're kind of telling the fans look if you like this you got to pay for like you know to see more and by that i mean (laughs) prepay yeah this just seems a little 
a little cheap to me. Yeah. I wouldn't be looking forward to the quality if they do get their funding goal. <laughs> no. Because, you know, in the past, I've looked up, I mean, you and I, Isaac, have looked up costs of making your own comic book. And back in the day, if you wanted a decent amount of print, you know, hard copy versions, you know, you were looking at like 25K, 20K. And that's that's paying someone to, you know, write and st- or uh, draw and stuff. But for a, a, a corporation of that size, that's peanuts. Just make the comic. There must be no internal push at the company to get this done. So they're literally just laying it on the, the, the customer base themselves to show that this this should get done. I guess it's a wise financial decision, actually, because they're really not putting any of their money into seeing whether this should be is even desired or not. Oh, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah. it's it's a win-win for them. You know, yeah. if they don't have to pay for it and if it comes out and it's popular, then great. They have another hit on their hands. Ugh, I don't know. It just Unus- rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. Unusual for sure. Yeah. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't like that move. But anyway, if you're a fan of uh, Gun and Breaker Battle Log, uh, I hope it gets funded. It's going to be called uh, Gun and Breaker Battle Log New Build. Great title, actually. So yeah, there you go. I guess if you want it, it's, you can go fund it on Kickstarter. Let's see. Uh, when does the Kickstarter end? Well, from the day we're recording this, which is. August 25th. You have 27 days to back this project, and they only need $80,000. Isaac, $80,000 is nothing in the scope of what Bandai Namco is. I am embarrassed. <laughs> God, this. I wonder if internally there was the answer was no. Their analysis said, no, this will not make money. And then someone said, well, let's just see if the fans do it. So as far as they're concerned, it was a no. They're not going to spend a penny on it, even if they can. Yeah. And their pre-analysis and projections must have said, oh, this will be a flop. We're not putting a dime. We'll see what the customers do. If the customers can fund it, sure, they're essentially paying for it themselves. But we're not going to back this at all. Yeah, as of today, there are 243 backers, and they've contributed $23,128 out of the $80,000 goal, which means I'm curious that the average contribution is $95. That's pretty high. So those people are pretty dedicated, the people who are funding it. I hope it gets funded, guys. Prediction, Brian? You think they're going to make it or not? Uh, 23000 bucks so far. Uh, I'm going to say it's not going to make it. No, I will not either. Wow, so that means Bandai was right. <laughs> yeah, I think it probably went up for about a month. I imagine things kind of peak in the beginning and then die from there. Yeah, I mean, I have seen some that, you know, pick up steam towards the end, but... Huh. I do think that's pretty rare, so I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm hoping I'm pulling for you guys. I'm not sure that I want to fund it because I haven't really watched Gundam Breaker Battle Log. I have no idea if it's good or not. Some listeners told us it was good and we should watch it, but um, well, good luck if you're going to put money into it. I'll I'll sit this one out, but um, hey, if it, if it happens, I hope it's great. So ends the news recap, Isaac. So to recap, we got really cool CG series coming Requiem for Vengeance or at least it looks pretty cool I hope Isaac's idea pans out <laughs> Gundam Evolution shut down which was not surprising to us unfortunate for those who like the game we yeah. had the uh, terrible <laughs> Gundam Ace Suleta Mirine controversy what a what a debacle uh, that was yeah just stumble ironic that they make another movie that has freedom in the title but you can't write marriage uh, <laughs> to, into your interview about the series <laughs> and then we got uh, uc engage coming overseas to the u.s and then we got johnny ryden ending brian can finally read it nice and we have the uh the underhanded kickstarter campaign because bandai's too cheap to just <laughs> pay the eighty thousand dollars or they might have wisely not wanted to fund it based on <laughs> maybe, how the Kickstarter maybe. is going. <laughs> Prove them wrong, listeners. Go fund the project, I guess. I don't know. If it's good, uh, fund it. If it's not good, then don't fund it. But Well, it was definitely an interesting uh, news update for all our little Gundam fans to enjoy. And uh, yeah, I, I hope the listeners enjoyed all the news. Yeah, so let us know what your thoughts are, listeners, on any or all of these news items. This is a lot of varied news isaac there's a lot of happening in the gundam verse is it, uh, to your point in the other episode we just did i think this is you're right i think this is the golden age of gundam except for the marriage thing that's that's like <laughs> dark ages right there but you know yeah you know what i hope things are still continuing to progress though in turn because we had iron-blooded orphans to kind of kick it off we had it happen again here in witch from mercury i i really hope we see the full-blown thing in the next series time will tell all right isaac take us away All right, listeners, before you go to sleep tonight, stand next to your bed, get on your knees, put your hands together, look up at the ceiling, and hail Zeon. Good night, everybody.